Hello everyone and welcome back to For the Minions episode 24, the weekly show where we talk about all the spiritual successors to Paragon, the, the games that might be able to take the place of Paragon, maybe, maybe. But anyway, this week we have uh, news and updates as always. We have the poll results, the poll being uh, who was your favorite Paragon hero. And then after that we're going to roll into Tech Time, this time with Ruba, thank God, because he's going to show me what I did wrong in last week's Tech Time. After that, the uh, topic for discussion, we're going to be talking about the roles that the various companies are kind of perceived as, like some of them are perceived as the front runner, some of them are kind of the underdog, and we're just going to discuss that a little bit further. But anyway, I am your host, Mangoose. Joining me as always is pro streamer Mandy Mal. <laughs> How you doing, Mandy? I am doing so good. We got another good show lined up for you guys and another great guest host joining us today we have mr dkt gaming but his friends call him dk how are you sir i am doing wonderful wonderful thank you so much for having me on the show today oh thank you for being with us why don't you uh tell us a little bit about how you got started with paragon who your favorite character was to play all that good stuff so how i got started with paragon um i fell in love with mario when i first saw that trailer and her coming down and her wings and everything, it was beautiful. And then when I got in the game, I played her, I was like, uh, yeah, that's not for me. I almost <laughs> quit because I was like, what is this? Like, I'm, I'm thinking, because my first MOBA, I never played a MOBA, didn't know what they were. And Paragon came and Mario was just beautiful. And I'm like, all right, I got to play as that. I, I got to play as her. And uh, then I got I started to play with her and I was like, no, I can't do it. And then I met <laughs> Kalari. And uh, Kalari was just my favorite. Yeah, my favorite character is Kalari. And I like playing her in jungle and off lane. Very cool. That is such a cool story. I wonder how many, because my story is similar as far as I've never played a MOBA before. I just saw one character and was like, what is that? I have to get, you know, get in on that. So I wonder how many people that was, you know, the case for. They just saw how beautiful the game was and wanted to get in on it. Muriel's such a very hard starting character too, especially if you've never yeah. played a MOBA before. Coming in on, yeah. on Muriel, trying to play support. <laughs> yeah. Period. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Didn't know what support was. Got in there, and I'm in a lane by myself. I'm, I'm trying <laughs> oh, to chase no. down people, and I'm like, I don't think this is the game for me. Yeah, and then I had to do some homework. I, I came in um, probably like in like round crunch into Legacy. Somewhere around there, yeah. And then from Molinif on, I, I started playing and streaming it. Yeah, and you streamed right up until right up until the servers closed. Like we were the last stream. We did a twenty four hour stream. We we're the last ones to play until the server closed. Wow, yeah. we that is really stream cool. The last day, yeah, yeah. Extremely DKT cool. is extremely knowledgeable. Has probably more hours in Paragon than anybody I know. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely going to be a good guest for us today. It's going to be a great show, yeah. But uh, let's uh, let's move on to uh, news and updates. Um, Made a buff. Uh, I was talking to them a little bit. I was asking them about input lag because we know predecessors alpha had some input lag, and uh, they're saying that the way they built their game, they're not going to have to deal with any kind of input lag. So that's something we can look forward to whenever they finally release their alpha. Hopefully, sometime, so hopefully we'll get some information sometime soon. They did say that they'll have some big information for us at the end of the month. End of the month is coming up pretty quick. Let's hope they have some cool stuff planned for us. And uh, I did ask them as well if they plan to do any more roster swaps because you know they. They swapped out FaZe and Kwong for Decker and Fing Mao, and they swapped out Revenant for Sparrow. Just wanted to see if they had anything like that kind of up their sleeves and planned, and uh sounds like they do not. Um, what are you guys' feelings on, on, on the input lag and on the, the roster swaps? DK, I'll let you go first. Um, I'm, you know, the, the, the roster I think is fine. Uh, the original heroes, want to play as those guys, get them out there. Um... As far as the input lag, uh, hopefully, hopefully it's smooth. My <laughs> money will go and my backer will go behind the first one to get me a playable version in my hand that feels like Paragon used to feel, Legacy or Monolith, and that's who I'm behind. Yeah, <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, moving on to Omega Studios, uh, Smokey was out on a business trip, so there wasn't a lot that got done for them. Uh, he's just kind of been streaming his work on Murdoch, so... If you want to check out the development streams for Predecessor and get a better feel for how far along they are, uh, you can do that on Smokey's Twitch, which I will have uh, linked down in the video description. And um, uh, anything, any, any thoughts on Omega Studios and Predecessor? 
I'm really happy that they're streaming again. Um, I had kind of mentioned that before that I missed uh, the streams. They're really fun. They're a really good source for like little bits of knowledge. Um, he's Smokey's pretty open to answering anything that he can answer, you know, when people ask questions. So if you guys aren't checking out those streams, I highly recommend them. Um, they're really uh, a good little source. If you have questions about the game, they're a good source of knowledge. So, and I don't think it's too much of a secret that Omita is kind of my favorite. So I'm always, always rooting for them and always excited to hear what they have to say. So. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely helps uh, having them stream. Like, it just, it eased the time, eased the pain in the heart that Paragon's gone, <laughs> and then it makes you feel good that someone's That's actually true. actually working on it. So, like, I, I enjoy watching them, too. I just, like, I'm just like, I want it, I want it, I want it, but he helps. He helps deal with the pain. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, it is kind of like getting a little, a little snack. You can't get the yeah. full meal, but you can get a little snack. <laughs> Let's uh, move on to Ethereal. The, they gave us a, little, a few examples of what uh, UG Tricolor, not Tricolo. I was calling him Tricolo last week. It's Tricolor. For some reason, I didn't see the R. Whatever. I like Tricolo <laughs> better. But anyway, <laughs> UG, uh, UG Tricolor is going to be at the uh, Colossal Con in Sandusky, Ohio, like we announced last week. And uh, they gave us this malware um, sort of animation splash art sort of thing. So I'll have that up and displayed so it's pretty cool i didn't know that he was going i knew he was a marksman i didn't know he was going to have a bow like that's like he's like that the weird sentient computer virus thing and he's going to be shooting like virus arrows out of a bow that's that's awesome <laughs> i love that <laughs> what do you guys yeah, think about malware i think that splash art looks amazing that was really really cool um it's an interesting choice i think like i would i guess i would kind of expect him to have a I don't know, more magic-y energy type of weapon, but I yeah. like, you know me, I love a bow. That's how I got into Paragon with Sparrow and her bow. So I'm excited. Um, I think he, he will probably be one that I will definitely be checking out first among the, the uh, myths that I want to play first. So and then, what about um, you, DK? Yeah, it looked, it looked awesome. It looked really awesome. Like I'm just thinking about his abilities like malware. Like I'm shooting an ability and and be it can be like disrupt or confuse a right. confuse someone and make them Ooh, cool. make them go backwards and invert their their abilities like you know invert everything when they try to cast they they uh, they shoot shoot something else or they walk backwards when they try to cast like that just looks man it looks it looks perfect it was really good looking arrow that's something you don't see in a lot of mobas and I think that's a cool concept um, I know it's been in Warcraft a few times is the only way I know of it. But like, yeah, like that confusion ability where it just mixes up yeah. all your controls. Yeah, that would be really a really awesome form of uh, crowd control, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be. I love that idea. Who knows what they've got up their sleeves. And then, uh, they wanted me to remind you guys, uh, all their myth models that they show, like uh, I'll show Nikolai right now. Uh, those are real in-game renders. Those are from the game. Those are not cinematics or anything like that. So... Pretty cool stuff there. Very good looking art and very good looking characters. And also, I just want to remind you guys too, um, you don't see as much progress from Ethereal and Visionary Games as you do with uh, Core and Predecessor. Uh, they didn't start with assets. Like, they're creating all their, their own new stuff. And as we've explained, you know, building the game with the assets is already hard enough. It, that it, It's not a simple task at all. But if you're building from scratch, from ground one with your map, your characters, your ability sets, your lore, everything, that's going to take a little more time. So if it seems like Visionary Games and um, with with Phoenix Rising and Undying Games with Ethereal are a little bit behind the others, that is why. Yeah, I think um, Opolis had a really good kind of analogy of like, Epic basically handed them like a window crank and said, here, now you can build a Maserati type thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a really good example of, you know, yes, the assets were a little bit of a help, but they're not a lot. It's still a monumental um, project for them to take on. So just imagine not having that little bit of a leg up. I mean, you're even like you said, the lore, you know, you want to have a solid lore behind some of these characters before you... Um, create this world so it takes a lot of time and creativity and hard work and so yeah i definitely understand where they're coming from with that yep what do you think about ethereal dk 
You know, I don't I don't know a lot about it, but um, I mean, besides from what you show and what you talk about every week, um, I like the heroes. I hope that you know they they're starting from scratch and there's so much to build. Like Paragon took forever, it, you know, and yeah. just hopefully, I'm just rooting them on. I want them I want them to come out and show something just a little bit, so the you know just to just soften that blow but it's i don't know man it's hopefully good luck to them good luck yeah, yeah good luck definitely then moving on to visionary games and uh phoenix rising uh nothing really from them just a lot of a lot of positive vibes christian uh seems very pleased with himself and i don't know what it's about <laughs> but i'll kind of want to know i'm hoping that we get to see something from them soon they put out so much information whenever they first um released their you know announced that they were going to be creating a paragon like game it's not going to be using the assets they're going to use their own assets but uh yeah a lot of cool stuff came from came out of then and then of course they shut kind of shut down in november but they're back up and running and i want to see what they have been up to since then because there really hasn't been a whole much released from them since then yeah i believe his exact words were just know it's lit <laughs> yeah <laughs> So that's going to move us along to the poll results for this week. And uh, we changed up the poll uh, this week. What we're going to be doing is going to, I had everybody vote on who their favorite Paragon hero was. And I offered every single hero as an option. And uh, let's take a look and I will go full screen with this. So let's take a look and see who won. So it looks like Gideon came in first, followed closely by Kalari. And then uh, there was a tie for third place between Crunch and the Fae, which really <laughs> kind of threw me for a loop. I mean, it is my subs that are that are voting on this, so that might have something to do with Crunch and the Fae being so high up. But uh, I will I will post the results. Let's 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 look. some of the ones that kind of surprised me were ones that didn't receive any like Drongo got a vote. He got at least one vote. That's good. <laughs> let's see if let's see if there's anybody that just didn't get any votes. Tara, Tara did not get any votes. Sparrow, wow. Sparrow got one vote, so I guess that was you, me. I was going to say I me. guess you actually <laughs> voted. That's so funny. <laughs> it's kind of surprising that Sparrow only got one vote though, and uh, Zinx yeah. got zero votes. So Zinx and Tara, no Zinx or Tara love. Hmm, interesting. Tara's like my second favorite too. Oh really? Yeah. Tara yeah. has been a very polarizing uh, character. People <laughs> yeah, either right? love her or hate her, so that's, you know, I guess not too surprising. And then, uh, of course, Richter um, wasn't eligible to win because, like I've always said, he wasn't a hero, he was a fucking champ. <laughs> 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 love me some Richter. So that's going to bring us on to Tech Time with Ruba. Last week, I uh, loaded up a hero into the Unreal Engine and was kind of playing around with him. It was uh, Yen. I kind of decided on Yen and gave her the uh, Crypt, was it Crypt Goddess skin or whatever. But anyway, I did some things wrong. But luckily, we got Ruba, and Ruba is going to explain to me what I did wrong, show me how to do that and how to do the animation. So enjoy Tech Time, everyone, and I hope you, um, I hope you guys take the the next series of tech times and uh apply them yourselves just un it's not that hard to download the unreal engine and once you get a feel for it and you watch you know you just watch ruba showing me how to load the characters up and how, how to put them in like a third person game you guys can take your heroes and and run around with them you're not gonna be able to do much with them maybe not yet but it, you can at least run around and experience a little taste of paragon for yourself so uh let's move on to tech time Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Tech Time. As I mentioned last week, we're going to be going through, figuring out how to get a, a character into the Unreal Engine, loaded up and moving around. As you can see, I've got I've got this Yin kind of moving around a little bit, but she has no animations. But that's why I've got Ruba at my back. That's right, we got Ruba back for this week, and he's going to tell me what I did wrong last week, and then uh, show me how to apply some animations to Yin. So it looks like she's running instead of just sliding around in a weird pose. So, uh, Ruba, take it away, my man. Hi, Mongoose. Thanks for having me back. Um, yeah, so, uh, blah, where are we going to start? So, I suppose the first thing we should probably do, um, if you're interested in like getting into Unreal and kind of like, getting first steps, um, first thing we have to probably do is set some basic up. So, if you want to hit Escape, Mongoose, and then uh, go up to Settings at the top, uh, the, the button just down, 
in the middle. There we go. There we go. And go to project settings. Okay, that's so, uh, a different window, so I'm going to pull that over. Excellent. Okay, so, uh, oh, okay, so if you look on the left, you have a maps and modes button just underneath gameplay tags. It's fourth one down underneath project. Up, 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 up. Uh, maps and modes, there we go. Okay. Click that, yeah, click it. Uh, okay, so um, this pops up like these are all like the, uh, the base settings for the game. That you're running. Um, if you click where, if you just to the right of your mouse, you see selected game mode, and there's an arrow drop down. So, uh, right here. Uh, just to, to the left, where it says selected game mode, that one and then down uh, one. Uh, 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 yep. There you go. Click that. So um, all these things here are like the uh, uh, well, what they call boilerplate. So they're, they're like the key pieces for when you're setting up an Unreal uh, project. So your pawn class, so pawns are like, uh, they're just like, well, they're, they're like they're like anything in Unreal Engine that can move around and has movements. HUD is like your UI. The controller controls all your inputs. Um, the one that we are interested in is the default pawn class. So if you can click that, and by default, it's using the third person character, which is like the dummy one that comes with uh, the Unreal Engine third person project. Mm -hmm. We are going to, we are going to choose a Yin player character. Which oh, is right the there. Bottom okay. One. Yep. Do that one. Um, I think everything else will work fine for what we're going to do. Um, so you can, uh, if you go up to the top where it says project settings and close the window, top left, you can set a little X. There we go. So, um, so what we've now done, if you uh, double click in the in the browser window at the bottom, the the last one that says Yin player character, the blue one. Oh, uh, the window's actually in the middle above you, and it just went really small. If you click the middle button, it'll... Uh, it'll okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay, so, right, okay, so we're in. So, um, the Yin player character is known as an actor, um, which is uh, uh, anything in the Unreal Engine's an actor. So, uh, a player, a minion, a tower, anything like that um, is considered an actor. And in particular, Yen is a, is a or this this player character in just now is a particular type of actor um, known as a player character, as you can tell by the name uh, Yen player character. So up left, it's kind of hard to see. There's like a bunch of components. So what you can do is you can attach things to your player character. So uh, the capsule component is like the 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 thing that the the the, the mesh or the area that Yen exists in the world. So that's used for things like when you hit hits or not. Uh, the arrow component we can ignore for just now. The mesh is where we want to go, though. So we click on mesh, uh, uh, and then double click. There we go. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. so this is your this is your mesh, um, and by default you can see like the arrows. So that's you see how Yin's pointing. You can see her whip. Um, the box that's around the whip uh, is known as a collision component. So what that does is when you hit with Yin's whip, um, anything that gets hit by that box is considered hit. So Unreal uses um, that box for hitting stuff. Okay. Um, this is like the default part. So this isn't the one that you used. Um, you copied in the the mummy Yin. Yeah. Is it she, yeah, mummy. So this is like the basic. Con this is like the basic controller where it kind of handles the camera. So you can see that blue box on the left. Mm -hmm. That's your uh, that's your player controller. If you hold right click, you can kind of drag around as well and move around inside that window and see everything. So you've got your camera there. Uh, look at this. Um, you've got your camera controller. So that's the camera there. So when you play in the world, this is kind of all the parts that you've got set up. Um, the first thing um, that is actually already set up. So the player character that we're using um, needs something known as an animation blueprint. Uh, and the animation blueprint, we've talked about that in Tech Time a couple of times. That's where you control all the animations and how one animation blends into another and so on. Um, by default, if you're using the um, the player controller and the animation blueprint that come with the assets from the, the marketplace, so the, the epic ones, they're not bad to get started off. Like You can build them completely from scratch, um, but like a lot of the logic and stuff's in there already. So on the left, where you see... Um, no, the other left, the right, where it says animation. So you've got that list of details. Animation. Um, 
So you'll use animation blueprint. You won't use the other one. Okay. Um, and then uh, like uh, animate the other ones for like if you want to do like a single animation. So I don't know. You've got like a tree that's blowing in the wind. That you just have one animation before you use that. The the animation blueprint um, has logic in it that lets us move around stuff. Um, and then if you go to anim class and animation blueprint, you can see that we've already got the default epic one set there. So the yen animation blueprint. They're all like the the dummy ones that come with it. Um, but yeah, so she's already set up. Um, if you want to change the the skin or the mesh just below where you are just now, how it's set to yin, um, you can do that and click on that. I believe if you choose anyone other than the... Oh, I was going to say mummy, but the crypt goddess. If you choose any other one, that is going to load up all your shaders again. So you can either stick with this one or you can switch to your crypt goddess. Um, uh, let's just should, switch to crypt goddess so we're not <laughs> loading up shaders all day. Perfect. So that's already set up. So um, every time you open up a skin, like it loads up all the shaders, which are like all the textures and all the lighting and all that. Um, so we are good. So um, the last thing we have to do, because we've made changes to this, is up the top left where, you say, where it says compile. If you hover over that, it'll tell you that you're unstuck. up. It'll tell you that your blueprint's dirty. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> dirty which, in. Um, which means you've made changes and we have to basically say save these changes, but not save. So hit compile and then save. That will uh, kind of commit all the changes that you made. Hit save. And then you can close that window the same way you did the last one. Okay, no, now we're still in Tivos. Now, if you, on the right, uh, where it says World Outliner, so these are all the elements that are in your world. So you've got stuff like, uh, you've got, um, what have we got? Where it says third person on the ground, that's the text box, which is be somewhere in the list. You've got the cubes, you've got all your bits and pieces, but we do have one, and it'll probably be in the list, and it'll be called third person something something. There we go, third person character. So you can click that and then delete it. We can kill it. Um, we don't need it. Um, you Three above where you just deleted, there's one called Network Player Start. Um, what that does is that's, I don't know if you can see it, but it should be in the map somewhere. It'll look like a little flag. Um, that's where that's where we basically tell, there it is. That's where Unreal will say, start here when you spawn. So in Paragon, that would be on the, uh, the fountain pads. If you're playing like any other sort of game this is like this is where i want to spawn um, so now if you hit play at the top hey <laughs> oh and she does her intro animation too nice she does now her whip looks a bit weird but if you left click you should have an attack montage so if you keep if you keep left clicking you'll put you'll find that she there we go oh nice oh yen's Ooh. back look at her yeah so unfortunately, um, there's no sound effects. The only sound effects that come with the uh, Paragon assets are the horrendous, well, mostly horrendous voice acting. Um, there's no abilities, there's nothing else to up. I think you can jump, oh yeah, you go. You can jump um, and you can also move uh, left and right. So um, some of the animations are hooked up, um, but not all of the animations are hooked up. And what you've probably noticed as well, is that the uh, the the camera's weird? A little bit, yeah. So you'll find that you can, if you actually move towards yourself, you can actually run towards the camera. Yeah, see, um, and that's not the way that Paragon's set up. So what we'll quickly do is we'll fix that, um, and we'll fix something else, and that should be almost like everything. Kind of, it should feel kind of like Paragon, so you can run around the camera and be locked in the same way. So uh, if you hit escape. And then double click on where it says Yin player character. Right uh, down the bottom and the yep in the in the blueprint. Now, uh if you zoom out, I'll quickly talk about what this is. We're not gonna actually do anything in here. Um so this is the event graph, um, which is where you store all the logic for the character. Um and by default, this uh this logic um works with a third person template. So if you're doing this yourself, if you use the third person template in Unreal Engine. Oh, all this stuff will kind of hook in. So you've got movement input. Um, there's a box there. So that's like when I press W, move forward. When I move, press uh, D, move right, and so on. You, down the bottom, you've got your combos. So this is like all your, all your like where you hook up all the logic for your character if you're going to do it in blueprints. Um, what we're going to do is we need to fix some of her um, 
stuff. So on the left, um, where the components are, if you scroll down, there's a component that's just hiding below our list. Called that's the one. So this is the character movement arm or character movement component. Um, this is a another um, like oh, th th this is another component that's introduced in Unreal, um, and this is how you control character movement. If you click on it. Um, you then have on the right there, you have a ton of settings that you can set for your particular character. So you've got jumping, falling, falling. Uh, your jump Z velocity is how fast you jump. So like the, the, the speed of your jump. Um, so you can turn that up and jump really high. You've got uh, the level of air control. So if you want to have a character where you can kind of move in the air and glide, you can control that. You've got boosts. Um, and you can scroll all the way down. There's like tons and tons and tons of settings here. That you can play about with um, and this is a good place if you want to get like speed um, further down you've got like gravity acceleration braking um, mass is used to like um, you can increase the mass of certain things like boulders so they appear heavier uh, ground frictions there as well max walk speed um, is a is a useful one as well under walking that lets you set your speed paragon used various different movement speeds at the end in monolith i think most heroes use between 650 and 720 so if you want to play about you can you can do that um so i think that uh if you keep scrolling down there's a setting in here that i just want to double check uh okay so that one there that says orient orientate rotation 2 it's in character movement rotation settings that one there um two down that's the one there. So this is um, this uh, is one of the settings. So that's uh, orientation, orientate rotation to controller yaw, I believe. Uh, if you turn that one off, and then if you um, go back to the left and go to component, we're going to go up to the very top, and then click on Yin player character, and then up the top where it says search on the right. If you click and search and type in yaw, Y-A-W, there we go. Um, that says use controller rotation yaw. We're going to put a tick in that. And then we're going to do our compile and save. And then you can close that window and then hit play. And we'll see if I remember how to do that right because it's been a while. So now if you click in and then you can move around. Okay, yeah, so she doesn't turn backwards towards the camera anymore. No, and you'll find that when you look up and look down... Oh, yeah, I oh. said her jump <laughs> <laughs> pretty high there. So, uh, if you look down towards the ground, you'll probably see she does something weird. No, she's okay. She's okay. The uh, the aim offset. So, um, one of the things you might notice as well is... She doesn't uh, do side-to-side -side motion anymore, though. So... Well, she she didn't she technically didn't do it before. Um, what she was actually doing was she was always running forward, um, and this is part of the problem that that happens with the uh, the Paragon animation assets is that they don't include side to side um, animations. Um, but um, if you're okay with that, I think that's probably a good point to stop. That we've got camera set up, we've got the character going, um, we have some attack animations. Um, and then if you want, in the next episode, we can go over how you start getting her movement animations looking right. That sounds great. This was actually, um, it was a lot simpler than I was making it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot that's going to go into this, but actually just getting a character in here and getting her uh, moving around and playing with her is uh, pretty easy. Um, guys, I encourage you to download the Unreal Engine and mess around with this on your own. Follow along with Ruba's instructions. You know, use what I did as a base, and uh, yeah, you, you you'll be you'll have your your favorite hero up and running with whatever skin you want him in in no time. So I really appreciate it, Ruba. Um, I guess I will see you next week where we'll get her uh, running side to side instead of uh doing what she's doing <laughs> now. <laughs> instead of doing that. All right, no, no worries, Mongoose. See you and everyone next week. I hope you guys enjoyed that little segment of Tech Time. We're going to take a pause for a second to welcome two new patrons to our Patreon. We got Joycenator Gaming and Foolish Blood Hunter. Thank you very much. Mandy, let's give them the heart. 
So they join a uh, unhappy camper. That's uh that's awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, hopefully soon we'll have enough money to buy Mandy some charisma. So let's Never. move on to our topic for discussion, <laughs> which is uh. What we're going to be talking about today are the perceived roles of the company, kind of the way everybody is looking at these different developers. Um, for example, Core, I think, is sort of looked at as the front runner here. Like, they've got the most support behind them. People seem to think that they are the ones that are definitely going to be able to bring that Paragon experience back to us. Um, whereas Predecessor, they're looked at more as kind of just like a family business. Like, oh, ain't they sweet, making their little game. <laughs> and, uh, and then, um, but... Then Ethereal, they're, they're kind of looked at as the dark horse. Like, nobody really knows anything about the game that they're producing because it's going to be, you know, so ambitious and so crazy and new. So they're they're a bit of a, the dark horse here. And then Phoenix Rising is, of course, the underdog, and they have been since November. And uh, I just kind of wanted to talk about that, get you guys' thoughts. Um, DK, how do, you, how do you look at the... Do, do, do you classify any of these games as, as a role? Have they taken on any role in your mind? uh yeah well yeah core is definitely the one that like it looks like it's gonna be the one that's gonna come out first i hope um it's 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 definitely the one that looks the most professional in my eyes like the website looks really good it's very you know you can go through and click on everything it takes you to another menu um predecessor uh looks looks good and you know the the great thing i like about the predecessor it because because he streams every week and and they and they give us a little bit. I, I feel like they're they're definitely the underdog here. I think that you know it's family owned, and they're gonna be able to provide us with a great great MOBA. Um, I I don't really know a lot about um, Ethereal and the other one, Phoenix Rising. I don't really know a lot about them, so I, I haven't really followed them. I just mm -hmm. I'm just hoping that MetaBuff. Can put out something quick and predecessor. <laughs> I enjoy watching the weekly shows. I just enjoy enjoy watching those weekly seg segments. Mandy, what are your thoughts? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think you really hit the nail on the head with your assessment that they they almost, if you were to look at them as a business or like a corporation, which I guess that's kind of what they are, but how you made the example of like Walmart versus a family business. Um, that's kind of how core and predecessor have kind of come to look in, in my eyes. Um, but sometimes I even look at core and predecessor in a category by themselves and ethereal and Phoenix rising in a category by themselves because simply because two are using asset Paragon assets and trying to replicate Paragon um, much more so than the other two, whereas Ethereal and Phoenix Rising are just making a third person MOBA that is maybe reminiscent or has a feel or has aspects of um, Paragon. So sometimes I even separate them in that way um, because it just seems like, you know, especially when we get to talking about the viability of all of these companies, and you start talking about competition, it's it's hard for me to see Phoenix Rising competing with Core when they're making different products, in my opinion. So that's kind of how I have started to to view some of these guys. Yeah, that's a very good point. That's something a lot of people, um, that was a criticism a lot of people had about the polls that I was doing before, was you really shouldn't have Ethereal and Phoenix Rising lumped in with Core and Predecessor because it's they're they're very different like core and predecessor i think we can everybody can say that they're not competitors they're competitors they're they're, <laughs> they're trying to remake they're both trying to remake their own versions of paragon um with you know of various differences and, and ethereal and phoenix rising they're kind of making their own thing um everybody's sort of competing for the same player base um i think ethereal a little less so but phoenix rising you know they were directly saying that they wanted to create a game like paragon they just wanted to use their own assets. So, yeah, that's a very good point. Ethereal Phoenix Rising are definitely kind of separate from Core and Predecessor. And uh, I just I just want to make make it clear, too, that I don't think... Like, when I say Core is like Walmart and Predecessor is like a family business, I don't mean to say that, like, Core is like a big, huge, evil corporation that's trying yes, to no. oppress the little man. No, no they're no, all no, small. No, no, no. They are all small little... Yeah. 
um, indie companies and either doing their best they can to, to create a game that we can enjoy, a game based on Paragon, which, you know, was taken away from us a little too soon. And yeah, I don't want, I don't want to kind of give that impression, but Predecessor does really kind of give that like family owned business sort of feel to it. Like you can go in and talk to their, talk to their developer and his live streams and he'll call you out by name and <laughs> like he gets to know everybody. Whereas you don't really see that as much from core, but you do see a lot of results from core. So like core is kind of like Walmart in that, you know, that when you go there, you're going to get what you want. <laughs> you, <laughs> if you know what I mean. How do you guys see um, when it comes to competition between Core and Predecessor with Predecessor being more heavily influenced by Legacy and Core being more influenced by Monolith? Do you think that alone is going to split people? Like the more Legacy, people who love Legacy are going to go towards Predecessor and people who love Monolith will go towards Core? Or how do you guys view that? I think it's definitely going to split people. Um, <clears throat> and... I think I think a lot of us forget how like like legacy was huge and I I'm a I'm not much of a fan of legacy map. It was just the games went on very long. I really like Monolith because they're they're short games and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. Uh, <laughs> not not as much as you would think. But, not as much as you yeah. would think. Yeah. But but I think that, you know, and that's what separate the two, you know, we got a, a much larger map and a smaller map and and um, when you go to get on those maps and see which one goes faster and which one you prefer, it's 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 going to really change things, and, and people are going to start going in one direction, and one's going to start you know going the other. And I think, yeah, I, I think I think it's going to be good for us to have two different map sizes. And then you get the you know you got your choices out there, mm -hmm. so you get to play two different mobas and and uh, get two different maps. So you you know done with one map, just go over to the other one. So. <laughs> I think it's yeah. good competition competition all around. It only benefits us, right? It only yeah, benefits yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of my hope is that everybody will play both and, and they'll be, you know, a big everybody will be happy and everybody wins. Everybody gets a participation award. <laughs> Don't say that's not gonna happen. One of them's gonna <laughs> Yeah, somebody's gonna lose. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's also important to remember it, this is the very tip of the iceberg. The Absolutely. very, very tip of the iceberg. We haven't even seen these games yet, so we can't really like like predecessors alpha the kind of debacle with that like i don't i don't think it was a debacle for them the, it was you know the alpha is a tool for them to use to develop the game i don't think anybody's going to remember that like a year down the road when predecessors like you know up and running in an actual game um mm -hmm. like the roster swaps that people got pissed off about with core ain't nobody gonna remember that <laughs> like a year no. from now you know um Nobody really remembers uh, the very first alpha iteration of of, uh, of Paragon. I mean, some people kind of do, but th there's like a lot of stuff I forgot. Like I forgot that Decker had a passive ability that would let people regen mana every time she used an ability. Like, who remembers that shit? Nobody no, remembers don't that remember shit. That. No, 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 don't remember it. I'm just happy <laughs> that they put something out for us. You know, it's absolutely. Like test, you know, I'm grateful for that. And I'm streaming and stuff every week. That, that's just I'm awesome. That's awesome. The map tests from Core have been really fun. Yeah, they have. Yeah. So, uh, you guys at home, if you have any comments, any any anything to say about you know the various roles that these companies have taken in your minds, I would be very curious to find out. You know what? How you guys perceive these different gaming companies? Um, that would be a, a a fun thing to discuss. And I do, you know. My opinions can sway. They they can change quite a bit based on input from you guys. Uh, I do not consider myself to be a Paragon expert at all. And uh, let's all you know if we if we all put our heads together and come together as a community, we can really help these companies create a better Paragon for 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 all of us. So yeah, just uh, let's start up a discussion in the comments below. And um, yeah, that's about all I got to say about that. Does anybody have any closing thoughts on the topic for discussion? Uh, I definitely was excited when we were kind of going over that this was going to be our topic for discussion. That was my immediate thought is that the chat, the viewers are going to have a really cool input on this. I know because just like you said, your opinions can kind of be swayed. Sometimes someone in the chat will say something and it's like, oh yeah, I never thought of it that way, but that is so true. That's such a good point. So I'm really excited to hear what everybody thinks and uh, what their opinions are on this topic for discussion. 
Right on. DK, you got anything else to say? Uh, no, no, I don't have anything else. No. Okay, right on. Now, um, I wasn't able, I was a little busy this week, uh, as you guys probably saw from the uh, little live streams I've been doing, but uh, I wasn't able to get uh, the community suggestions done up. But uh, if you guys have any suggestions for community suggestions, let me know and you know I'll, I'll throw them in there. Also, wasn't able to do a community builder. Um, the community builder, I my channel has always been about building the community and that includes other content creators. So if you're a content creator and you think you have, you know, good content and good, and good, uh, good videos that you want people to see. And, you know, just, you're just having a hard time getting them out there. Let me know. Um, I'll check it out. If, if I enjoy your content, I'll put it on there. I mean, if your, if your content is garbage, then you know, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to let my, you know, subscribers in on that, but yeah, just just let me know and I'll and and I'll uh, I'll hook you up. But uh, I think that's going to be it. Let's move on to plugs. Mandy, professional streamer extraordinaire. You got anything to plug? Uh, I guess my Twitch. Um, I actually wanted to take the opportunity to thank Queen Elvira. Which, if you guys don't know Queen Elvira, she is Sergeant Smokey's um, wife, and she is a streamer, a phenomenal streamer. And thanks to her, she doubled my uh twitch followers so i definitely wanted to take a moment to say a big big thank you to her and to everybody who uh in her community who followed me and um she is fantastic you guys definitely need to go check her out if you don't follow her already so my plug i'm plugging queen elvira <laughs> doubled so you have two now <laughs> <laughs> the cat liked it yeah yeah that's your only fan <laughs> dkt gaming you got anything you want to plug man oh man you know i'm gonna plug you man <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate you bringing me on the show I, I thank you thank you so much man uh and you know shout out to my youtube channel come by watch a bunch of old paragon episodes i got over 400 of them on there for you to watch and enjoy. So it's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of legacy, uh, a lot of monolith on there. And uh, just come on out to DKT Gaming. They are hilarious, by the way. I was <laughs> cracking up so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make sure you go and listen to our Paragon Ritual before yeah. every match. Yeah, Paragon <laughs> Ritual. Go, go listen to it. Yeah, def <laughs> definitely go check it out, guys. Yeah. Great content from DKT Gaming. <laughs> What have you been playing recently? Uh, I know I noticed a lot of blackout and yeah, blackout. It's pretty much what I've been like surviving my channel on. I try to get into smite. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't either, enough. man. I can't either. Yeah, I, I tried so hard. I just can't do it. But uh, yeah, blackout and uh, I'm playing Dauntless now. Dauntless is a new uh, Monster Hunter uh, like game. Are, are you playing that on console or uh, console? Yeah. Oh, okay. PS4, yeah. Oh. It's <laughs> I mean, cross. I mean, is it cross, cross platform now? Yes, yeah, cross oh. platform and cross progression. So I've been so. I've been thinking yes. about picking up Dauntless. So, dude, it's good. It's really yeah. good. It's free to play. You can play with PC, Xbox, PS4, all of them together. So. Awesome. Let's hit that shit up. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it now. I'm gonna get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really got nothing to plug. So. <laughs> I'll plug you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are great. I love <laughs> love the fans. I love uh I love all the comments you guys leave. Really appreciate yeah. it. But uh, for now, this is going to be the end of the show. This is the For the Minions team signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoose! Right. <laughs> <laughs> Man. We coochie gravy. <laughs> you know how... Well, I don't know if you guys will, will know this. Um, that clothing line that's called Juicy Couture... I don't know if you guys nope. have ever heard of this. Okay, so there's a clothing line called Juicy Couture, and they used to make these uh, sweatpants or whatever that would say, like, Juicy across the oh, butt I've or whatever. I've seen those before, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, my aunt, the first time she ever saw it, she's like, Juicy Cooter? Why would you call yourself Juicy Cooter? <laughs> 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 it was amazing. Oh. Juicy Cooter and Coochie Gravy. Awesome. That's right. <laughs> it's Gucci gravy. Gucci gravy. <laughs> GG. That's what GG stands for. I'm oh, gonna start, I'm gonna is start, gravy. Gucci gravy. <laughs> I'm gonna start saying CG Gucci gravy. Yeah, man, Gucci <laughs> gravy. Right on. <laughs> People be like, "What? What did you just say?" Or it might catch on. You never know. I think it will. <laughs>
<laughs> Coochie gravy will catch one. That's a t-shirt right there. That's gonna be our next t-shirt. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's Coochie, what I wanted to. Oh man.